How's everyone doing, guys? Hope you're alright. Cody back again, dropping another video. Right, guys. Um, it's Wednesday night. If you, if anyone's just been watching my Twitter and stuff, I've just been reflecting about my time in prison, right? Um, and I've just people are retweeting my stuff and stuff. Normally, people just interact with me. I've just keep getting loads of retweets and like likes and stuff on my on my uh, posts and stuff. And I'm just speaking openly and candidly and stuff. And I wasn't. I don't think of an audience when when I tweet. I just tweet off the bat, just like when I do these videos. I just talk from from in here and what's in here, right? Um, now, when I when I was in prison, right, the first time I was ever in prison, I did. I, my mum used to talk to me and stuff on the phone and I'm thinking like you don't know what I'm going through you have no idea what I'm going through you're not on this roller coaster with me in here right do you know what right obviously having been through the system a few times unfortunately that's just a fact right I'm embarrassed to say that but it's true um having been through the system right numerous times now um and having an older wiser head on my shoulders I look back at the person I was and my mum probably lived the prison roller coaster more than I did. She she was the one that was working all the hours of God sends, right? She was running around trying to buy me this and buy me that to, to bring clothes in to put into me so I can have them in prison. Right. She was the one that was working all hours God sends, right? Coming on visits, right? She's an anxious she's she suffers with nerves and anxiety, right? Doesn't really like driving places she doesn't know, right? And she's travelling to prisons in Manchester and in Salford, right? Forest Bank and uh, Strangeways on visits to come see me she's sending me money in right money that she's worked her ass off to get she was working minimum wage jobs right so she could send me money into prison right and i was acting like it was a given right? i was i didn't appreciate it at the time right because i was a disrespect i was a disrespectful little fucker right um and like i say looking back you look at the stress and the 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 helplessness that your families feel while you're inside right your families are outside thinking feeling like knowing that they see all these stories about prisoners being attacked and stabbed and oh a prisoner's died and stuff like that or a prisoner's been taken to hospital or something like that when it breaks in a news story right and you know what yeah if it's the prison that their loved one's in they're thinking that it's fucking you they're thinking it's their their loved one that, that that's died that's been rushed to hospital having been attacked or something like that right um prison obviously all the news um it shows all the, the 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 bad stories about prison and violence and drugs and drug deaths and suicides and hangings and everything else that goes on in prison and they're petrified that it's going to be us us prisoners us cons yeah they're going to think it's us right and we're just living our life in prison yeah we have the we have the up moments and we have the down moments right but you make friends in prison and you, and you start to pass the time and stuff but then obviously you do have your down moments and stuff like that but you know what for your families on the out right the families on the out yeah they're stressed they feel helpless that they can't help you because they're, they're in no because there's nothing they can do to get you out of the situation like a mother a mother's intuition is to look after her son same with a sister wanting to look after a brother you could have brothers on the out that are trying to look out for the sisters obviously they're female prisoners as well or their mom could be in prison or their auntie right or like i say people's children grow up without a dad and stuff because crime and we've been in we've, we've ended up in prison and stuff like that crime prison doesn't discriminate guys right whether you're blind you've got mental health issues you rank you suffer anxiety depression um you've got health problems age race gender fucking sexual orientation it doesn't discriminate guys it fucks us all in the end right prison whether you like it or not right it doesn't matter i'm a big like six foot four guy i can fight and then some right but prison chips bits off you right there was a change in me when i left prison for the first time right and you know what right do you, do you want the and i'll be op very open and candid now right do you want to know the reason i came away from crime right and the money and the, the fucking and the um i'd been on tv i was i was i was on tv there was another series booked i was due to be on there was all this fucking thing you've got knocking around with people in supercars and the money and the champagne and the nights out and drinking fucking um like all the nights out and the girls and the fucking bling and everything that come with it right and the the notoriety of being a bad boy and all that shit right do you want to know why the reason i came away from it guys honestly because my mum came on a visit right um to see me and my mum's made of stone and she had tears in her eyes and i'm getting upset thinking about it right but at that point, yeah, I thought to myself, I thought, you know what? 
right? I ain't doing this to my family no more, right? I was a selfish prick, yeah, I was doing what I was doing, right? And I had no concern for my family, right? And when my mum came and my mum, honest to God, my mum raised me hard, yeah, yeah, man. But she had tears in her eyes, man. And to see such a strong woman, right, with tears in her eyes, yeah, physically trying to hold them back, yeah. I, I thought to myself, I thought, how much of a selfish prick am I, right, to put my mum through this, to put my family through it. Like I say, my mum was working every hour God sends on minimum wage, right, literally struggling to keep her head above water, and I'm demanding that she brings me money, she sends me money in for this, or I need a canteen, or send me fucking 50 quid in this week, and send me 50 quid in that week, right. Like I say, times have changed, and I'm, I'm a different person now, I've come away from crime, right, and I'm skin, and I'm on my ass, right, but do you know what, right, I did it for the right reasons, and I can look myself in the mirror every day knowing that I walked away from my money, from money, from criminal opportunities where I could have earned more money, right? I walked away from friends that I were involved with, right? I was involved with, a, I was in a relationship with a girl way back when, right? I walked away from my, I walked away from my relationship, from my friends uh, and everything, literally turned my back on people for one person, for my mum. Now that sounds pathetic, doesn't it? And I know you guys are going to take the piss and I'm going to get trolled and stuff like that. But it's an honest assessment of where I... Prison didn't rehabilitate me, right? All that prison did, honestly, was make me more criminal connections, right? I, I see... I see prisons as universities for criminals, right? You, because you're in prison with people, fraudsters and scammers and everything else, right? You can learn a lot of trades within prison, right? Um, but... I also, it chipped a bit off me where I thought, you know what? When I saw what it had done to my mum, I thought, you know what? When I get out, I ain't going back to no crime. I walked away from everything and everything I'd ever known, right? And everyone I'd ever known for my mum. Because I could not bring my mum, take my mum back through that situation. Look at the cost, right? Look at the sleepless nights, yeah? Look at the fucking anx anxiousness and stuff that it causes families. The stress, the hassle, the anger, the, the, the emotion right, that you don't see, right, you might see a glimpse of it on a visit, right, they're living that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, guys, right, and you know what, right, it, it, it literally can take years off pre people's lives, I genuinely believe that, my mum's getting older, my mum's got a heart problem, right, she suffers with angina, right, um, and I see my mum and stuff, she smokes a lot and stuff, and when I got out and stuff like that, right, I seen the, um, I was in the car with her and stuff, and I seen, like, she breathes very hard, it's hard for her to breathe and stuff like that, and she, and she can hear her and stuff, and I look at her little hands getting all frail and stuff, and I thought, you know what, I ain't doing this no more, right, and I walked away from everything and everyone I'd ever known, right, for my mum, sad I know, but I did it, I was, like I say, I, I wasn't, <laughs> I did it for my mum, and because, you know what, I didn't want to put my mum through that no more. Like I say, prison, people in prison, some of them are very selfish people. I know because I was one of them, right? Um, but there became a point where I thought, you know what, I, 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 weren't, I was quite happy living that criminal life and stuff. It wasn't until I saw what it was doing to my mum, and when I'm speaking to her on the phone, and I can hear her voice breaking up on the phone and stuff, and, I, and I'm sat there like nothing, like, do you know what I mean? Like when, when I was up, my mum was down. When I was down, it made my mum even more down, right? People in prison, right, guys, th there's not rehabilitation for people in prison. People struggle. People are in prison screaming. They want education. They want courses. They want, they want, there's a lot of pe people in prison, right, and not bad people. There's some very, very good people in prison, right? We made mistakes, right? And that's why we're in prison, right? And prison is punishment enough, believe me. Like I say, but prisoners' families don't deserve to be treated like shit. Prison staff, not all of them, but a lot of prison staff speak down to prisoners' families and stuff like that. I think it's disgusting. Um, they've not committed a crime. All they're guilty of is loving their loved ones, right? And you know what? Like I say, a family relationship or a relationship as in a sexual relationship obviously you can't have sex while you're in prison with your loved one on the out but you know what i mean that could be the difference between staying strong or crumbling like a piece like just crumbling i right? 
and spiraling and suicide. I do believe that. And it's important that family family relationships and stuff, that the key to a prisoner, right? Things that are key to a prisoner in prison, right? That lift his morale, right? Buying canteens, right? When you get a canteen, when you get a letter from your loved one or a card, right? That's why I've always said in these letters and stuff, uh, in these videos, how important uh, correspondence is with a loved one, right? Even if you're mad at them, right? Give them an uplifting word. Don't never never go to sleep on an argument with your loved one on the phone they can't bring you back to apologize can they you put the phone down they don't know then if you're going to turn up at the next visit they don't know if you're going to ring them back right they don't know right in prison your head's mangled right so anything a prisoner says while he's in prison he will push people away he will get angry he will say things he doesn't mean it doesn't mean he doesn't love you. It's just he's he's in a down, he's in a really bad position and stuff. And he might feel worthless and think, why? What are you doing with me? You're wasting your time. You're wasting your life. Move on with yourself, right? He doesn't mean it. It's just down in that instance. Like I say, not not enough. Um, the, the prison, like I say, prisons are very selfish place, and prisoners in prison become, become very selfish. People become addicted to drugs, and then they're the kicking off with the family, send me money and send me money because they're probably in debt with a drug dealer or something, right? Like I say, there's too many people leaving prisons, right? In, in body bags with mental health problems, um, suicides, and everything else, self harming. Um, violence, everything else that takes place in prisons. Prisons are cauldrons for hate and violence, right? And problems that, uh, if you was on the out, it'd be a small problem. In prison, it's blown up like a mountain. It, it can make it, it can, honestly, it, it can push people over the edge. It really can. Like I say, there's a lot of people in prison that are crying out for reform and they're crying out for educational courses and stuff. And the simple fact is because of the cutbacks and stuff from the government, which then enforce like the domino effects on some industry justice, then it affects onto the prison and stuff like that. Um, prisons are getting are making profits and getting fat and rich and prisoners are suffering. Prisoner, there's a lot of prisoners in prison that are lost in the system, right? There's prisoners in prison that if they get out and they're giving educational courses, they'll go back to crime because that's all they know. But there are also a lot of people in prison that want to be given the opportunity, that want, that are crying out, right, for courses. And so when they get out of prison, guys, do you know what? For a lot of prisoners, honestly, they want to get out of prison, have gained educational courses, right, or something they can use when they get out. And you know what they want to do, surprisingly, right? It's not, well, it's not a surprise, but it might be to people watching. People want to get out of prison, right? They want to get a job, right? They want to support the family, earn a wage, pay tax and pay back into the system. But they're not able to, guys, because, like I say, the, the government cutbacks and stuff like that are crippling prisoners. And, like I say, then you've got these private prisons like Sodexo ran prisons and Justice uh, G4S ran prisons and stuff that are getting paid for filling prison beds, right? So every time the court sends someone down, they're just seeing bags of money. They don't see prisoners. They don't see prisoners' lives. They don't see prisoners' families' lives. They see money. And, it, and prison for profits, right? It's disgusting, right? People are getting fat and rich of prisoners' miseries and of prisoners' families' miseries and their kids' miseries, right? Um, like I say, more needs to be done, guys. I am desperate to, 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 to start a movement here in the UK where we actually, like, people sit on Twitter, right? And the more than, like, they're entitled to do that and sit on Twitter and slag off the Ministry of Justice and slag off the prison system. But how about we do something about it, Right? Not nothing illegal or anything. Just we should come together as one, right? As prisoners' families and prison and former prisoners and reformed prisoners, and everything else. We should come together and challenge the system and march and protest and stuff like that. Then you contact all the media. The media would come in the droves. They would come. Believe me, on a local scale or on a national scale, you get the fucking media down. They'll turn up. Trust me, they'll turn up. They're all about the news, right? Like I say, prisoner stories, right? Are getting lost in the prison system the reason i do these interviews guys with the media and stuff and i do these vlogs why because if there's if prisoners are suffering in prison in silence right and what happens is minute fat prisoners families try and get stories out the, the 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 media say right we'll run a story on your loved one that's in prison but we've got to we've got to um like justify it like we've got to like get confirmation from the prison that they contact the prison the prison have got a blanket policy uh, to stop stories getting out of we do not discuss individual cases guys right and it's stopping it's stopping stories of misery and everything else getting out of prisons this is why i do what i do right i don't get paid for this i don't want to get paid for it. i don't give a shit about all that stuff right like i say i turn my back on money on crime on my friends right for my mum I'm not a mummy's boy. I simply, 
I sat there one day and like I said, I was in the car with my mum when I got out of prison and I seen her old hands getting older and stuff and I heard her breathing and stuff, like heart, like struggling to breathe and stuff like that and the fact she's got health, like she's got angina and stuff like that and I thought, no, I'm not doing this no more. So prison didn't, prison didn't rehabilitate me, right? I just made more criminal connections but I just simply decided that I'd had enough of putting my family through what many fam prisoners families are going through on a daily monthly yearly basis simple as that right guys like comment subscribe all that good stuff and i'll speak to you soon